Hello, welcome to my latest video where I'm uploading to YouTube um, spoken word and monologues, things that I've written just to pass the time really um, while we're in lockdown. So we're in the fourth week of lockdown in the UK, which basically means that we can go out for essential supplies and we can go out for a daily walk or exercise of some form, walk the dog, ride a bike, whatever. Um, but other than that, we're at home. Um, so I'm really lucky that I've got a nice place to be. Um, this is quarantine beard, quarantine hair. Well, I suppose lots of people are experimenting on different looks that they can have because we're not actually physically seeing anyone. Um, so the poem that I'm going to share with you today was written specifically for a LGBTQ plus um, evening that is usually a physical, actual, real evening. But obviously with lockdown and with physical distancing, the venues are closed. So the event happened last month online and is happening again this week online. And the difference between how I usually perform at this event and the performance this week is that we've been given a word to inspire our creativity and I've never really worked like that before. I usually just write whatever is going on in my head, um, whatever that might be. So the word for this week was the word web and we could use that in any way we wanted to. So at first I was a bit, um, well, I suppose I got writer's block really because usually I'm stirred by an emotion or a feeling or a message that I want to send. Um, but it was been really sort of an interesting creative experience to sort of sit down. So I wrote this yesterday afternoon um, just with the word web and this is what happened really. So if I read it out to you, you can make your own minds up about it. Okay. A tangled web. In the stillness of the dawn, I see it suspended, light captured like jewels in the morning dew. Intricate and delicate, yet rigidly geometric, the web reflects the light with a crisp silver blue. A beautiful network of fine threads, constructed to catch its prey by a spider yet unseen. Her night's work bridges a gap in the garden where the honeysuckle and old trellis convene. My gaze is now focused on this elaborate trap over which she has toiled hour upon hour. With the addition of the sweet perfume from each colourful trumpet-shaped flower. Pungent scent, fruity and warm with hints of honey and ripe citrus, a sense sensation. This natural scene in the watery light of the early hour has the power to capture my imagination. Remembering that spiders use the mutual electrical attraction of their web to their prey. The spider and the fly, the main players in a naturally choreographed life and death dark ballet. Flying insects' wings create an electrical charge that in turn acts as a magnet for the spider's web. A dance of doom played out as the seconds pass and life is fought for in the flow and ebb. Her food captured in this network of sticky fine threads that vibrate to signal its arrival. A complex system of interconnected strands transmit to the spider its breakfast's battle for survival. Does the spider sit back and make time to rest and appreciate the beauty of her fine art? Or is her reward for this creative act simply the insect struggling and trapped at the web's heart? Human eyes have the ability to impose a narrative structure and create a false perception. We must understand our own motivations and not be quick to accuse others of deception. And I have the realisation that this wondrous creation before me that has such aesthetic appeal is in reality a tool for a hunter to capture its prey, a simple and functional vessel to house a meal. But my blindness to the simplicity of this natural interaction is something from which I can learn. We should not allow our eyes to be biased by the longing for an ordered life for which we yearn. A cold, ugly truth exposed, or the beauty of the natural world, is purely based on how we perceive. Look to ourselves to understand the tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Well, uh, make of that whatever you 
Well, um, I thought I would pop back on at the end of the video because in the introduction to this, I did say that um, it was inspired by a creative um, online event that's happening. Um, I didn't mention the name of the event or who hosts the event, so I thought I ought to drop that it is Speak Outside the Lines. It's a monthly an event, an LGBTQ plus friendly kind of event. Um, dance, music, uh, spoken word, monologues, poetry, whatever. It, and it's hosted by non-binary performer Red Gibson and they put all the hard work into arranging the event and have put a lot of hard work into keeping it going in the virtual sense while we're all on lockdown. So I thought I ought to mention um, Red Gibson. So that's Red Gibson, host of Speak Outside the Lines in Staffordshire. Okay, I will see you again whenever um, I happen to feel um, that I want to upload something onto YouTube. Bye.